It is a great honor to be here in Singapore. I would especially like to thank Mr. Mr. Boon uh, Swan Fu for his kindness in making this possible, and many thanks to to Dr. Z and also to Sito Wei Wei Ping. Is that the correct pronunciation? For their kindness in helping to make this a, a wonderful trip, and I've been very deeply impressed with Singapore. Um, with some apologies, I would like to try to say something. Uh, <笑>不好意思,我的中文非常差 so I'm trying to say that I'm trying to say that I'm just deeply impressed with the wonderful economic development here, how great everybody is, how polite people are, and oh, Singapore food is also very good. But I'm especially impressed with what's happening here at ASTAR, the, the, the success in science, in research, and in innovation is truly very impressive. And I would like to talk a little bit about that and compare it to some interesting parallels that we're experiencing in my state of Wisconsin in the United States, a place many people forget about when it comes to innovation and technology, but there's actually some very interesting parallels. So my opening slide here, has um, a map showing a linkage between Wisconsin and the United States and Singapore, and also two mythical creatures. One is the merlion from Singapore, which I got to see last night. What a wonderful scene that is. The mythical uh, lion with the fish tail. And then also Bucky the badger. A badger is a fierce, uh, ma fierce mammal in uh, Wisconsin that has a lot of mythical characteristics also. There's a map of Wisconsin showing some of the things we're famous for, the Green Bay Packers, lots of sports, and great outdoors, um, plenty of cheese and cows. There is Wisconsin. One of the secret weapons of Wisconsin is the University of Madison system, a very large system of universities, University of Wisconsin system, and UW-Madison especially want to talk about something going on there that is related to what's happening in Singapore. I also should tell you about where I am right now. I used to be a professor at the Institute of Paper Science and Technology, which is on the Georgia Tech campus. A wonderful experience there. I joined Kimberly Clark after that, had 13 great years, was corporate patent strategist, and got very heavy into intellectual property at Kimberly Clark. When our chief innovation officer, Cheryl Perkins, left to form a new startup company, the uh, excitement level was too much for me to resist because they were doing all the things I loved to do involving innovation, intellectual property strategy, um, exciting technology. So I joined Innovation Edge a couple of years ago and our CEO was named by Business Week as one of the world's top 25 champions of innovation in 2006. Uh, we work with companies doing open innovation, innovation strategy, new product development, intellectual property issues. We also take on a few inventors and startups to help them with the commercialization aspects using open innovation and other tools. We also have an education mission as well. And we, mo most of our clients are in the U.S., but we do have international interest and some clients uh, outside of the U.S. And innovationedge.com is our website. So Wisconsin and Singapore, there are some really exciting parallels here. Many people in Asia have never heard of Wisconsin, but it does exist and there's some exciting things going there. In fact, there are some similar journeys in building systems and cultures for innovation. And there's ongoing ties between the two. They are both two small places that have exciting potential for innovation that can change the world. And both offer lessons to others on how to overcome innovation fatigue. Now that's the title of a book. I've got a little booth out there. Um, there's the book. just came out from John Wiley and Son. This book is about the personal side of innovation and some of the hidden barriers to success. It's directed to innovators, but also to business leaders. Uh, policymakers, R&D staff, 
and shows how to understand and overcome nine major fatigue factors, we use the concept of immigration to a foreign country to describe the journey of the innovator in the, in the business world. It really is a foreign world and some of the same challenges exist. And we get into, uh, some, I think, some new and original contributions in disruptive innovation, especially the role of intellectual property in dealing with disruptive innovation, how to do targeted innovation and licensing, and some pretty interesting, I think, case studies from some companies like Orion Energy Systems, where the CEO is very helpful, for example, in giving us some, just some great information. Uh, this is a chart. We've got the poster that, that uh, Wei Ping very kindly printed out for me in the, in the little booth, and I can explain what all this, what all this means. So these are icons that represent each of the nine major fatigue factors. And it's important to realize when you're facing innovation fatigue, when innovation is slowing down or you hit all those barriers, many people, many books will say, well, it's the CEO's fault or it's management's fault. And there are organizational factors, but that's maybe one-third of the picture. There's also a lot of factors that happen at the individual, personal level. Sometimes the research Sometimes the weaknesses of inventors are the biggest barriers to success. And there's external factors that also have to be considered, such as changes in the patent system, or taxation policy and law, or the numerous hidden barriers to effective university industry relationships. So that's all for another time. But I want to talk now about two um, distant corners of the globe and some of the interesting lessons from them. So Singapore with A-Star, Biopolis, Fusionopolis. It's so exciting to be here after having read about uh, so many of the, the brilliant innovations here and having talked with, Dr. With, Mr. with Mr. Boone for some time about what they're doing. The parallels between A-Star with Wisconsin Institutes for Discovery are, to me, very interesting. These institutes have two aspects. There's a public arm called the Institute for Discovery, and then there is the Mortgage Institute, which is the private arm. And I'm sure some of you are going on there. The parallels between these two efforts are this. Industry and state-run research organizations are being brought together to collaborate. They both emphasize co-location and proximity. This is really important. In the day of webinars and the Internet and, and Skype, many people are thinking you can be anywhere and collaborate effectively. And there's some truth in that but there's so much to be gained by rubbing shoulders, face-to-face -face interaction, and having institutions be physically close. So both have private and public groups, and both have proximity to many related organizations. Both create talented teams that pursue breakthroughs in the intersections between disciplines. That's where innovation is often found. Both involve innovation and in how innovation is done. Uh, Mr. Boone has emphasized that. They are innovating in the process of innovation, and I love that concept. And both are based on long-range vision and commitment to invest for world-class success. And both are very focused on human health and other human-related aspects to innovation. I think some of these parallels are really remarkable. There's some reasons for it. Let's look at ASTAR, and this is from my perspective. Um, I'm excited to see researchers and students being recruited globally and that industry is being brought to Singapore to form alliances and to collaborate, that Singaporean students are also being sent out to leading universities globally to get new perspectives and experience, and that the researchers right here are being strongly encouraged to go and have time and experience with startups and other companies so they know and understand what's happening in the business world. At the Wisconsin Institutes for Discovery, remember there's two arms, the Institute, singular, and the Mortgage Institute, I'll tell you what both of those are together, the private and public arms have brought together numerous large departments in this very large school of 40,000 students are interacting across disciplines through these institutes, and they're deliberately recruiting multidisciplinary talent to form innovation opportunities at these intersections of the technologies. Let's look at ASTAR. Their mission, to foster world-class scientific research and to develop human capital for a knowledge-based Singapore. They're going from idea to commercialization. So Exploit Technologies, led by, by Mr. Boonswan Fu, Executive Chairman, helps oversee the strategic marketing and commercialization. And it's very happy to meet some of the IP people yesterday. It's very impressive what, uh, what our chairman in this session is doing with are strengthening the industry savvy of these researchers and helping them build new connections for research. Collaboration is one of the keys to your success here. 